This episode and every episode of the Beer Guys Radio Show is brought to you by Ironmonger Brewing. Visit Ironmonger at their tap room in Marietta, Georgia, or online at ironmongerbrewing.com. Open up a tab, grab a seat, and pour a pint. It's time for the Beer Guys Radio Show. You want free beer? Go to the brewery. Dedicated to the art, science, and enjoyment of craft beer. Yeah, what's wrong with the beer we got? Now, here are your hosts, Tim Dennis and Brian Hewitt. And welcome to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We're broadcasting from the Beer Guys Radio Studios in Marietta, Georgia. This week, we're talking with Microphone Brewing. I'm Tim Dennis, and with me as always is my good friend and co-host, Brian Hewitt. Hey, Tim. So joining us today, we have Mike Palin, the founder of Microphone Brewing. We're going to talk about music and beer, new and trending beer styles, interesting barrels, and unusual ingredients. It's going to be a lot of show. Mike, thanks for joining us. Thank you guys for having me. Absolutely. Mike, uh, we're into one of your beers right now. We're just enjoying a, a Saison, a farmhouse ale, and it is called Do You Remember the Time? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about this beer? Yeah, do you guys remember the time when people used to drink Cezanne? I, yes. you know, <laughs> we've actually talked about that a good bit lately. So, and yeah, Brett beers, so, actually. Yes, Brett and Cezanne, right. Yeah, it was one of those styles that, like, we loved to make. And actually, we dedicated one of our fermenters to doing a Solera Cezanne to. And it's just Beautiful. a style that people don't care about as much as they used to. You're so right. It's such we a shame. love it. We give it its time. It's It does the whole Solera method. So, it's sitting on yeast that was used in previous batches. We bring fresh wort into it and uh, let it kind of do its, its thing. And it's funny because we can taste through it and you get those like, oh, it's perfect. Then it goes through a dirty diaper. Then it's, ah, oh, it's almost right. there. <laughs> yeah. Not yet there. Wait seven more months. Boom. There it's there. We are uh, actually, Mike, we're doing the Saison show in a few weeks where we're going to talk about nothing but Saisons. Nice. Be good to hear. Yeah, it's, man. It's really a style I love to brew because a saison based platform is something you're going to have a lot of fun with. Whether you want to do it sure. you know, clean and do a French version or you want to do a Belgian version, do a hybrid version, or you want to play with adjuncts in it or let it go in wood or play with Brett in it. It's, it's really versatile as a style. So as a home brewer, once I got through like kind of the traditional style, saison became my platform of brewing and I actually won some medals in in Cezanne. So it's clearly calling out for the milkshake treatments. Have you done that milkshake yet? Milkshake Cezanne. I haven't seen milkshake a milkshake Cezanne. Cezanne. I haven't seen it either. Thank goodness. <laughs> would, you, would you be mad at me if I told you we're putting some of that into a Malort barrel? A milkshake no, Cezanne you know, in a Malort barrel? I'm so conflicted on this. <laughs> The Solera Saison into a Oh, oh, okay. Solera Saison and Malort. You know, so I'm going to ask you about that. You've done a few Malort beers, right? Or yeah. or in the process of. So a question. I know a lot of people have drank Malort and people love to joke about it, but do you like Malort? It's definitely one of those things that we've gotten used to for sure. Um, okay. All right. <laughs> That's a conscious no, no, I, answer. I, you know, it's, it's, I, I, I mean, this goes back to me. This is like 15 years ago when I was first introduced to Malort. As a joke, when someone's like, oh, you were the first one here to the cabin up north. You get to drink this bottle of Malort. And you're like, oh. And it was kind of (laughs) one of those things. And then, like, I think Chicago did a good job of introducing it into draft menus and putting it on in mixed drinks and this and that. And I think we've all just kind of begun to appreciate what Malort is here and kind of make it our thing and and make it the Chicago handshake where you get – a shot of Malort and a Miller highlight to, to start and say, Ooh. welcome to our home. Is welcome. there a punch in the mouth involved in that too? Or I, I guess that's the Malort. Malort. Okay. That's the I Malort. gotcha. Yeah. It usually comes from your mom. Yeah. She yeah. should be right <laughs> on that. Yeah. That's it. What are you doing? But you know, I'm trying to remember what it's It's called screech. Up in Newfoundland, Labrador, I think specifically Labrador, maybe they have a really rot gut rum called Screech, and there's a thing they do there called getting screeched in, yeah. <laughs> and they slap you with a codfish, and you got to do a shot of Screech. That sounds I have, amazing. I have a buddy who sent me a bottle of it that lives up in that area. It's it's nice. just horrid. It's, it's horrid. <laughs> but you I mean, know, this, it's, this, I mean, give, give it a, give it a shot. Sorry to use that word as a pun. Sure. But yeah. It's it's. It's definitely got a lot of things going on in it that is not normal to the palate. But I think once you build into it, you're like, it's not, it's, it's actually, it's enjoyable to the point where you're like, I could do more of these. You're not going to do a whole bottle of it or be like, I need more of my Lord in my glass. But it's, it's the point where we, we've gotten used to it and we, we've embraced it and 
it's become part of the Chicago culture and we have fun with it. So can you have Stockholm syndrome to a liqueur? Is, is that possible? Is that so? <laughs> probably. Okay. probably. That's it. so, no, when, it's Chicago's when, and you when own it, right? Distillery, when the distillery who makes it calls up and says, do you want first access to Malort barrels? You say, heck yeah. I would too. And sure. Let's get at it. Let's get at it. And so that was last year. We put a Pilsner in there and actually the feedback was beyond phenomenal. This year we said, let's go different, right? Let's change it up. Let's do crush, 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 which is our, you're right, a milkshake IPA with oranges and vanilla. We put the Solera Saison in another one. We're putting a Pilsner in another one, and then our Bean Spirit in the final fourth one. Wow. The bean Spirit? Oh, really? Okay. That's that's crazy. So, yeah, we, we want to show what, so as this year, the last two years have gone on, I've gotten deeper into the, the bourbon barrel game and just figuring out what like, sure. what barrels mean and what they give to things. Um, so I want to showcase what the Malort barrel will give to different beers, right? So they won't be, I don't, I mean, we don't plan to release these in package. We plan to put them on draft. Let people kind of enjoy them as an experience to see what Malort barrels did to our base beer. That's it. I was going to ask if they were going to hit package because I, I would try. I would, I would, I would absolutely try. try, it. try it. Sure I mean, we'll, we'll crawl them. We'll crawl them off. And if people want them for a crawler, for sure. sure. But we don't, we're not going to invest packaging money into putting them <laughs> into in Malort beers. I tried gotcha. Malort. You know who gave it to me? I don't. The guest on our last show, Bruce, did. Okay. He had All Malort. Right. He uh, opened it up at one of his tastings because I'd never had it. Okay. I tried it and. Wow, that's really it's awful pungent. stuff. <laughs> and you like herbal liquors, I do, right? Yeah, like I, I really do. And, yeah, and uh, I do. What's the other one I'm forgetting? Oh, uh, I don't. Yeah, uh, what's, absent, absent. There absent. we go. Absent. Absent. absent tends to be sweeter, though. Like yeah. Chartreuse, I like it a fair amount too. But uh, yeah, intense stuff. I think we should get into the beers of the week, Tim. Now it's time for our beers of the week, brought to you by the Nest. Craft beer and barbecue in downtown Kennesaw, Georgia. The NestKennesaw.com. Well, Brian, as always, we have a fantastic list of beers to get into. I want to thank our friends at The Nest for sponsoring this segment. Brian, their anniversary is coming up at the end of uh, of February here. So Ooh. they're going to have some cool stuff. As mentioned before, they're going to have that whole smoked alligator on there at The oh, Nest. Yeah. So get by <laughs> and check that out. Uh, Brian, we've got a great microphone selection of beers. We have Crush, Crush, Crush Vanilla Orange Milkshake IPA. We are currently drinking the Do You Remember the Time? Brett Farmhouse, two-year Solera. We uh, pre-gamed with their Flagpole Citra, DDH IPA. We have a couple different variants of the Smells Like Bean Spirit Stouts, which are really going to be good. We have In a Blender Smoothie Berliner with Strawberry Peach and Banana. And Thirsty, that's T-H-U-R-S-T-Y-D-I-P-A. So plenty to drink. We should have a good time with it. Brian, what's happening this week in the news? What's in the news? The beer guys have the scoop. Extra, extra, read all about it. Time for headlines. And it's time for beer, more beer archaeology news. The world's oldest mass production brewery has been discovered in Egypt. The facility is thought to date back 5,000 years to the age of, of King Narmer, I think I'm saying that right, who unified Egypt and founded the first dynasty there. Uh, the interesting thing is this brewery is was known to exist in the early 1900s, but they didn't have any idea exactly where it was. They just found evidence of it. So they found it and uh, the, the exact location, and they know that the site consists of eight large areas for beer production. Uh, each of those areas had 40, 40 earthenware pots arranged in two rows, and there were vats for heating it, grains and water together. Archaeologists estimate that 2, uh, 22,400 liters or 5,917 gallons or about 108. 88 barrels of beer could be produced at a single time there. So mass production. Mass production. You know, Brian, I actually copied that link and put it on my LinkedIn. And Travis Rupp, the beer archaeologist oh, we, yeah. we had on our show in 2019, he commented on it and shared some additional information about what he thought they may have brewed there. He said probably a huge variety of beers. And he talked about a lot of the ancient grains that they would have used to brew. So pretty exciting information there. He was very excited about the find. Oh, yeah. And they think it was probably used for royal ceremonies in that quantity. It would probably wasn't just for the average Joe. But who knows? I mean, this is 5,000 years ago. It's pretty yeah, amazing absolutely. that they, they found that. So probably the most bizarre news of the week, a Los Angeles health inspector was caught on the camera dancing in a brewery immediately after ordering the owner to close the brewery down for COVID violations. Here's the thing. Bravery Brewery was not in violation of any regulations, and this happened on Super Bowl Sunday while the brewery was pouring draft beers to go. It's a really bad look. There's a video up of the incident on the Daily Mail, and it kind of looks like the a crummy end zone dance or a celebration dance by this uh, health inspector. Uh, yeah, so the, the boss 
boss called and apologized after the fact, but uh, yeah, there you go. Crazy stuff. Well, you're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We do need to take a break, but we'll be back with Microphone Brewing right after this. Have you ever thought about owning your own brewery but don't know what it takes to get one built? We're Storytime Construction, and we build breweries. We're Georgia's most experienced and hands-on contractors when it comes to building new breweries and tap rooms or expanding existing breweries. We offer full build-outs, remodeling, and additions, as well as consulting and construction management. Give us a call at 770-733-4343. Storytime Construction. We build breweries. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Remember, all episodes are available on demand. So if you missed the broadcast, get the podcast. Beer Guys Radio is available on all popular and unpopular podcasting apps. Now let's get back to Mike Palin with Microphone Brewing. Mike, we, we just came out of the gate firing with all barrels there in that first segment, man. We just went straight into the more, got crazy. So we're going to slow down here, catch a breath, and back it up a little bit. So what's your background? How did you get started in brewing? Yeah, so I grew up in um, just outside of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and my dad worked at Miller Brewing Company. Uh, wasn't a brewer, was more of a steam fitter, pipe fitter, working on the tanks and all the good stuff. Um, but I was kind of like into what he was doing. I understood the process. But he's like, don't do what I do. Go to college and get an education. So I went to uh, University of Wisconsin-Madison and went for business. Edu- eventually got a communications degree. But during my time there, I went and studied um, a class called, it was Botany, Plants and Man. And in that class was you could either brew a beer or grow a garden. And I mean, what sounds more appealing? Well, I can tell you what I think. Beer it is. <laughs> right. There it is. So we... My roommate and I were in the class together, we brewed a beer, and it kind of was like, this is perfect. Like, it was just fun. So once I moved from Madison, Wisconsin to Chicago, with my intentions were always music. I wanted to be uh, in the music industry. I wanted to move from Madison, Wisconsin to Chicago as a stepping stone to go to L.A. to work at Capitol Records. But things kind of progressed, and I got a great job in the music industry in Chicago, needed a hobby, and so I picked up homebrewing and applying my marketing background and my homebrewing background, I started microphone brewing Actually, 10 years ago was the the date of the um, logo, a little over 10 years ago. And so we were homebrewing, doing like a little blog post. Remember, do you guys remember Blogspot? Yeah, I do. Yes, yeah, sure enough, a long yeah. time ago. This, if you guys want to find it, Blogspot microphone, it's still out there. Uh, I talked about how you like take bottles and get the labels off of them and reuse them and all that good stuff back in the day. And oh, yeah. And labels yeah. and all the recipes and all that stuff. But um, eventually I had the confidence enough to go and um, – I shouldn't say confidence, but I just I just threw myself out there and started helping out Pipeworks and 18th Street, um, and eventually like one thing after another, getting more industry experience, I gained the confidence to start microphone brewing with my wife, and we kind of went through the whole gypsy contract brewing model, brewing at Slapshot Brewing, then went to Unane, which is also Unane Hub's Cave, and then finally eventually settled on our own space in Elk Grove Village, Illinois which if you're not familiar with is just outside of um, O'Hare airport in Chicago. And you do still for some larger batches. Do you, you still, if I'm not mistaken, you do some contracted octopi. Correct. So any of the beers behind you guys will probably be coming from octopi. So we um, early on when octopi was getting there kind of boots on the ground and you kind of figure out things, they allowed us to kind of do some, some uh, test patches there. And we decided to do smells like being spirit up there. So you guys will probably be seeing Smells Like Bean Spirit double maple pretty soon. Okay. Oh, we see I, one in our fridge today, actually. So yeah, we're happy exactly. about that. I'm, so. I look forward to seeing it on the yeah. shelf as well. Well, the, this was yeah. in the box that this was in the box you sent, so yeah. we got a little leg oh, up no, on that's that. A good one. That's a good one. That's, you <laughs> okay. guys have Imperial Smells Like Bean Spirit double Canadian maple. Oh, a different one. Okay. Okay. The Twice as good. Up there is. Um, smells Like Bean Spirit eight percent. Now, did I? I saw somewhere, and this may have been news pre-pandemic are you looking to uh for a second location are you in the process of that you know that's been on and off like we so uh, flashback about two years ago when we got or three years ago we got this space open here in elk grove 
Um, we were slammed. We had lines at the door. But we were like, you know what? Let's let's open a second location in Madison, actually across the street from Funk Factory Guzzeria. Um, I'm not sure if you guys were familiar. Yes. But we, we, we found a space. I went to school in Madison, obviously. Madison was kind of home to me. I wanted to, I wanted to get up there and, and open a second brewery. We pulled back on that to expand our current location, which we now have the whole building here. And our plans for a second location have kind of been put on hold because of expanding here, COVID, all that good stuff. But it is definitely my goal and dream to have a second location, hopefully in Wisconsin. And I'm thinking more of a kind of a remote lakeside seasonal brewery. Now, is that because you think people want to, are looking for that? Or is that just because you want to just hang out there and brew there and drink there? It's because I have put a lot of time into this industry and I want to go and kind of live my life and have fun. And then also I would be bored if I just sat around and did nothing. So I'd love to have a second location where I could do something, but be home with the kids and my family and, and chill out. And then how cool would it be to have a kayak up brewery, like super seasonal that would be pretty awesome. in the morning, get coffee and a beer or come during lunch or whatever you want. And then kayak home with a case of beer or crawlers, whatever. Like I think it'd be fun and unique and Again, super small batch, super unique. We could still, we have distribution rights where we can make beer in Illinois and self-distribute it up to Wisconsin. So we could buy, you know, move beer back and forth. Um, yeah, a little bit is, it's, it's, it's just a lot of um, selfishness of me just wanting to kind of chill and <laughs> slow down life a little bit. Because I've got two kids. i got an eight-year-old and a five-year-old. But it's also me not wanting to give up and not and not do nothing. I want to continue to do something. It sounds like home. a good compromise, good balance then. Yeah. So, yeah. Some people look for a vacation home. You're looking for a vacation brewery is what vacation I'm hearing. Brewery. I can't argue yeah, with that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You got it. You got it. Yeah. And that's that's fine. You can call it that, vacation brewery. It might be cool. The microphone the vacation, vacation brewery. brewery. Yeah. yeah. Put some yurt. <laughs> out there <laughs> i've been doing a lot of uh i've been getting into bourbon game very hard last year okay. because we're doing a lot more bourbon barrels and i want to know what we're picking so i've been going and doing picks and stuff like this and while on one of our last picks we kind of concepted the idea for the next brewery name which i don't know if we want to spill it here we could. oh yeah I think you, do. you do i'm pretty oh, sure you, you do. definitely yeah. do so i think i think Corey king has the best brewery name coming out of what he did right side project right yeah okay. sure so we not based off that at all but like Microphone, music, beer, spinoff. The sp- spinoff. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Of course. So you mentioned getting into bourbon a lot. Have you found any particular barrels, uh, bourbon barrels that you part- you favor over others or favored by? Yeah. I mean, 100%. If you want me to say that I want to, like, my daily drinker would be Stag Junior 15, which is not easy to get, right? So let's let's back out of that. Let's go to Elijah Craig. C920, I think, has been the one of the best, easier picks to get to. But I, I think that when we're looking to do beers, right, we, we want to play with different things. What we found is that, like, Willet Rye Barrels have been very good. Um, Heaven Hill Barrels always give vanilla marshmallow. MGP Barrels, depending on how long they've been in there, are really good. So it just depends on what we're, what we're going for, right? Time on our side helps out, but also time on their side helps out. And so we're trying to get more into uh, – we've got almost 200 – 53 gallon barrels filled and what we want to do is let those rest and then kind of pick through them and figure out what barrels match what barrels shine differently what barrels can be single barrel all that kind of stuff you know it's interesting because that was going to be one of my questions i've had brewers tell me that they didn't think the particular bourbon made that much of a difference in a finished beer but i can tell i I would say the opposite okay that's that's what's gonna i was gonna ask it definitely makes a difference a a weeded bourbon is gonna strip a lot of the barrel out and it's going to be a lot longer to get to what you want. I found that rye barrels have that extra layer that'll give you a little bit more. Obviously, like time will help out, but also um, freshness, wetness will help out. Um, so that's where we're going to start isolating that. We're going we're gonna to go and do single barrel picks. We're going to do um, rack picks. So like we go four high. Um, I think that, as we know, with Rick houses in distilleries, that as as evaporation and heat rises, right, things change. Sure, through those absolutely, up. sure. So if we don't rotate barrels, let's showcase what that means to consumers to be like, hey, this is a bottom barrel pick, this is a top barrel pick, same beer, same barrels, but different spots in the in the Rick house. In our case, we don't have a Rick house. I wish we did, but um, One in our barrel, a barrel room. So. I think as we, as I learn more about the barrel industry and going down to Kentucky and going a, a, across where I find the best barrels, Indiana, Kentucky, Wisconsin's got some stuff now. Um, I want to emulate that and bring that into the brewing industry and showcase that. 
Sounds good. We did uh, our show last week was on bourbon. We tasted a bunch. We discussed about the origin and the, the distillers. Yeah, we just had a good, good time stuff. with it. I love what you had to say about crazy is the distilling world though. It's so deceptive. Like I am reading every book possible, and to understand where everything is made, the transfer of it, where it's stored, how it's stored, it's so it's it's crazy. And then meeting blenders, like the, the, their job is seems amazing right but they have to get consistency throughout different elements of those recasses it's insane i love it i love it so much it's nuts it's good good fun to learn though you're listening to the beer guys radio show we do need to take a break but we'll be back very soon with more from microphone Beer. Craft beer forged with a reverence for tradition and new styles that start a revolution. Ironmonger Brewing. The brewers at Ironmonger Brewing pride themselves at being masters of barrel-aged, poppy, and sour beers. They invite you to their tap room in Marietta, Georgia to taste and see. Also visit their barrel room for an intimate drinking experience with great live entertainment. Keep up to date on all things Ironmonger by liking them on Facebook. Ironmonger Brewing. Establishing a new standard in craft beer. Brian and Tim, the beer guys. If you're like us, no lunch or dinner is complete without a pint or two of craft beer. Which is why Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and Duluth are always on our list. Tim, why do they call it Truck and Tap? Well, the tap part is easy, Brian. They've got 18 of them. As for the truck part, that's where it gets interesting. Truck and Tap features your favorite Atlanta area food trucks, so you're getting a different menu every day. Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and Duluth. Truckandtap.com. Let them know that the beer guys sent you. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Back off, man. I'm a scientist. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. I want to give a quick shout out to one of our great radio affiliates, WRMN, 1410 AM in Elgin, Illinois. Catch Beer Guys Radio on WRMN every Saturday at noon. Now let's get back to Mike Palin with Microphone Brewing. Mike, I believe that station is just a stone's throw from Elk Grove Village, isn't it? Probably. See? Not Probably. too far. Definitely. Out. Okay. He's like, yeah, maybe so. <laughs> at, least, at least it's a snowmobile right away because it's uh, uh, yes, a little yes. snowy up here. See, we don't get those here. I haven't ridden a snowmobile in eons. Eons. We have seen snow fall, but it was like yeah. 40 degrees and it didn't That's stick. It, it was, was it. amusing. Yeah, you guys are just, just east of Texas. So you're fine. We you're are. Fine. I, lo- I saw a map of where all the snowfall was across the U.S., and it seriously dips down to just like north of – the very northern northern corner of Georgia, we just really lucked out. It just barely missed us there. So, well, if you guys want to come up and party in the snow, we got plenty of it. Plenty share. to do, plenty to do. I saw uh, Revolution Brewing had a sign up that said they were serving coffee made with locally sourced organic snow, <laughs> melted <laughs> snow. So, have you brewed a beer with the snow? I mean, this is an opportunity. I, I, I'm not sure that would be. Good by the TTB. But, yeah, they uh, may not be okay with that. <laughs> may not be the okay, okay with that. Just a, yes. just a small I batch of it. Though, that the the cold water, the groundwater helps our brew day immensely. Oh sure, yep. You could do a snow cream like white stout though. You could do that. There you go. Yeah. You do you know snow cream, Mike? Have you made that before? No. Really? See, it's I thought in. when I was a kid in uh, the wilds of Nebraska, you, you, I was told you couldn't use the first snow because it's not clean, the first snow of the season. But sure. clean snow and then, like, uh, I think some cream and vanilla and sugar and all that, and it's basically like a sort of like an ice cream thing. Make sure it's not yellow before you I use it. Don't say, use that. Is the yellow snow there or no? No, not supposed to. I mean, it depends on what flavors you like, really. You Got can it. choose your was choice. It, like, it was Bailey's and snow, basically. Is that what it was? Or Well, for kids, no, it wouldn't Brian, be. No, Brian, you're not putting liquor in these kids' <laughs> ice cream. No. And it was many a face wash back in the day, but I never had, uh, I never had That's snow. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff, man. A little Malort and snow. Malort and nice. snow. Nice. <laughs> Woo. Well, Mike, I know that this is something I'm sure you talk about a lot because of the theme of your brewery, but music and beer, they're hand in hand for you. We've we've touched on a little bit here. Uh, all your beer names are inspired by music, whether that's a group or a song or that. Do you, uh, do you have any names that you just got in the hopper and are waiting for the right time to use them? 
there's always that kind of like as we listen to music uh, so all of our beers are the soundtrack to our lives right like it and i let my staff kind of influence that too like it all started with my songs i liked i was i'm a 90s kid so i grew up in the 80s love 90s music so 90s alternative 90s hip-hop went from there but continuously like new songs pop up we go from there um you'll see a lot of new age hip-hop um some random references to 70s rock because that's my dad but as far as new stuff i think we're we're kind of we're getting into more of getting beers that are kind of dialed in but and then listening to consumer feedback so in that sorry just use that word but we had feedback from consumers saying hey how about you take your your staple beer microphone check one two and make it triple and so we said okay how about microphone feedback so they don't know this yet, but we're going to do microphone feedback as the triple, double, double dry hopped, triple IPA version of mic check one two. So, so not mic check one two three. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. one two three. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, that's feedback. So we've done so. Mic mic check one two was a mistake beer. I don't know if you guys know the story, but we got into our new space. The first beer out of here was supposed to be microphone check. Check the system. The system failed us. So we then rolled into let's all right check it again. Microphone check one two. Good to go. So that's where that came about. And then when we decided to go, okay, micro check one, two is a double dry hop, double IPA. Let's pare it down to a single IPA. That became microphone solo. And let's go down to pale ale. That became microphone drop. And so you got drop, solo, check. And then let's ramp it up to feedback based on feedback. feedback. There and you go. Feedback is the worst thing you guys can get when you have a microphone. So Yeah, we don't want that. So. And we, that's the loudest thing, the craziest thing you can have. So we thought... Now is that is that a statement on what you think of the uh, the, the the triple IPA? Is that the worst thing you can get, or is that a no, <laughs> is that I mean, a bad thing? It's just, it's just the most extreme you can get out of a microphone, right? Okay. Like feedback out of it, and then also it's consumer feedback. So just trying to tie that all together. Like we've become, I mean, we're we're honestly we're about to celebrate six years and two weeks here. Um, I've become more adaptive to consumer feedback. And, you know, that, that just shows in our menu. We've got everything from a Czech pills and a Belgian triple and a wit all the way up to crazy fruit beers and stouts in between. Um, but a lot of this is like, let us know what you guys want. Like, let me know what you want to have on our menu and let's play with it. So this is what they've been asking for. So we're going to throw it at them. So let's go to it. So you say your sixth anniversary is coming up in March. Uh, do you have any plans for that? What, what's what's happening there? I, I know it's a, maybe a, a tough time to have party plans you know what's crazy is that we celebrated our fifth anniversary the day we got shut down so we were literally celebrating releasing a bunch of beers having a crazy awesome day come back in the tasting room after the sales and that's when the governor came on our tvs and was like shut it down and we were like Phew. so my wife was here with me <laughs> oh, we went geez. back to the office we formulated a plan and like let's go and that was a two-week plan well, guess what? We're almost about to celebrate. Yeah, <laughs> right. And Wear your mask. Later. We'll be done so, in 30 days. So if we can survive that year of craziness, and who knows how much longer it's going to be. And I'm not even worried about us as a business. Like, we'll, we'll, we'll figure out a way to get through it. I'm more worried about kids and people who mentally need to understand that life is about being with people and engaging and understanding normalcy. That's That's been a big part of our life that we really try to get focused on. Um but for us, on the business side of things, um, we're going to celebrate six years because guess what? It's a six-year milestone that we want to celebrate. So we're doing six beers, six years. Um, we have two, three barrel-aged beers coming out. We got two that are aged in mead barrels. So Superstition Meadery out of Arizona sent us up some crazy mead barrels. So we decided to put our collaboration from Forager in those barrels. So we're going to separate those out and do... From the window to the wall. So two different nice. beers. Mike, I've got to ask this. Is there going to yeah. be the third one to complete that series? Uh, next year. Okay. <laughs> the one about sweat? Yes. Yeah, okay. About that. All right. <laughs> yes. We might not go all the way with that lyric, but yeah. yes. Yes, 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 yes. Um, and then we have a, a beer called the Balloon Batch, which we're going to do is a, um, a, a select of barrels that will be with the highest adjuncts you can find. So wild Thai banana, macadamia nut, vanilla, um, and let that shine. And then we've got 
a cream ale with vanilla cheesecake flavoring, birthday cake flavoring, because why not? It's a birthday. Let's celebrate. Sure. We've got a um, IPA, 6%, with six dry hops, six different hops. And then every year around St. Patty's Day, we do Drunken Lullaby, which is a milkshake IPA with coffee, vanilla, um, and green flavoring. So we'll do six beers. Wait, wait, wait green, green flavoring, flavoring or flavoring? coloring? <laughs> We've got some things that we have up our sleeve to get green flavoring, coloring, yeah. Okay. Or coloring. Awesome. You're right. You're right. Nice. I was going to say, what what flavor does green have? I'm not, I'm not you have 100%. to drink the beer to okay, find out. We'll find out. I'm yeah. excited by it. Like it, The coffee in it, I'm on board already. Sure. It's, yeah, it's, we get, we, uh, if, I don't know if you guys have heard of Bones Coffee out of Florida. Plug, plug. Um, normally, we use, we never use the coffee out here in Chicago, but Bones Coffee in Florida has the craziest flavors you could ever imagine. Um, and we found that they've got that coffee we want to use. They have an Irish cream coffee that's perfect for this beer. Okay. So Mike, you know, we've covered all our favorite things here. I think we should definitely hang out because we've oh, talked we about saisons and coffee and bourbons and, and wrap. Yeah. So we, got, all... we covered it all. Malort. Hey, even? About, yes. hey, guys, I think we're missing one crucial part to my life or two. What's that? Cars and shoes. Cars and shoes. I'm into cars, man. I wear I shoes. am wearing shoes, and I yeah. do drive a car, so I think we're on board <laughs> with this. It. Are you a sneakerhead? Uh, yes. Okay. How many closets right. of sneakers do you have? Let's just stop right there. Just <laughs> leave it there, man. Too many sneakers. Well, you're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We need to stop this right now, too. Yeah. But we'll be back very soon to talk more with Microphone Brewing. Looking for great craft beer to enjoy at home? Get your beer to go at The Nest in Kennesaw, Georgia. Choose from their 48 taps to enjoy there with some tasty barbecue and take some home with you for later. Grab a crispy Pilsner, a nice tart sour, or a bold stout to sit by the fire. Just bring your growler in and choose a favorite or two to take with you. It's our beer, your growler at The Nest for your brews to go. Check out the beer and food menus before you visit at (laughs) thenestkennesaw.com. the beer guys on facebook twitter and instagram now back to the beer guys radio show Shake it, Woo! welcome back to the beer guys radio show if you enjoy the show please consider supporting us on patreon just go to patreon.com slash beer guys patrons get cool perks like beer guys swag and commercial free episodes now let's get back to microphone brewing mike we've covered some pretty great topics here you know going through quite a bit uh, we've got a few more things that we want to talk about i think as we talk about your beer, we can't miss talking some about the Smells Like Bean Spirit series. We're going to talk about Britney Spears a little bit here and maybe some beer fest. Probably, yeah. Some beer fest oh, talk. I didn't realize those, those kind of sound similar. I like it. So, yeah, man, we've Look got some hot, real quick. hot topic. What's that? I just heard a little uh, some shake and bake moments there. Shake and yeah, I right. I my daughter, Lily. She was so interested in watching the Daytona 500 after the rain delay. Okay. I love that kid. Love that kid. I hope I hope we can get a microphone sponsorship on a race car one day. There I'm gonna keep go. an eye yeah. out for it, man. Yeah. We'll you see. It. In? We do. Yes, absolutely. We got. To, what was his? Was it Clown Malt Liquor? Was that Ricky Bobby's uh, sponsor or something? Oh, jeez, so, I don't remember. A little sponsorship <laughs> on NASCAR <laughs> this year. Let's do it. Little stickers right there, I man. You got to start somewhere. And the next thing, microphone and Beer Guys Radio, the whole hood is ours. Oh, then yeah. I'm driving. Oh, then yeah. I'm driving. Yeah, okay, man. we've got it. I think we've got the plan. It's perfect. Perfect. It's gonna perfect. Be beautiful. Right. Let's go. It's going to be go. beautiful. Well, Mike Shake smells. What's that? Shake and bake. Shake, Shake and, and bake. bake. Woo! <laughs> well, Mike smells like bean spirit uh, stout. Stout, can you tell us about the kind of the birth of the series and how it's evolved? Yeah, I wish I could take credit for it, but uh, a good friend of mine, Paul, Paul Idzik, if you will, he came to us early on and was like, hey, I, I met this coffee roaster nearby. He wants to do a beer with you. What would you think about doing a stout with coffee? And I'm like, sounds kind of boring. So <laughs> <It's lame. laughs> what if we did uh, a breakfast stout with coffee? Add some maple had some coffee and go at it. And so he was like, well, I got a name for it. How, how about smells like bean spirit? I'm like, 
That's amazing. I really hope we don't get a C and D. Let's roll with it. And talk about coffee roasters has been amazing over the years. They've they've really done a good job of giving us this Sumatra mandolin blend, which is kind of a darkery roastery blend. And then it was kind of one of those things where we just made this beer, made it as an eight percent stout, and then we have like consumers wanted a bigger stout, made it ten percent, then we made it in a barrel aged. And then Eric's, Eric from Talk About Coffee is like, hey, how about you do an adjunct? How about you do a milk stout version of it? He's like, I'm not going to mess with it. We've, we've done so much to get the maple and coffee balanced in perfectly where consumers want it. Let's just ride it. And then finally I was like, all right, never mind. Let's go. And so we've unleashed probably 15 different adjunct varietals of it. Beautiful. Um, and just have had fun with it. And so it's become our staple stout. And then we always put it in barrels and usually we release that thing around a fest. But with everything going on, we, re- we canceled our fest last year. And this year, there's just no way we could plan a fest in time. So we miss we beer. miss beer fest. Mike. Oh, we miss them. And just beer events in, in general. We I mean, did we did a beer festival. We did a show at a beer festival, I think, February, early February last year. Yeah. And that's the last festival we've been to. So, so I was I was in um, California for a beer fest. Then I went to other half in New York for their fest. Flew to Wakefield in Miami, did that fest, did Three Sons Fest, flew back home, and then went to Hunapu in March, and Hunapu in Florida got canceled. And that's where you're sitting there. That's with right. Everything happening. And that was the last fest that I was supposed to attend. Because Hunapu was like a last minute cancellation. Yeah, right. We were there. We were all there. Yeah. Ready Everybody was there. Court. Exactly. Yeah. I forgot yeah, we that happens there. in March. Yeah. We were just sitting there waiting, like, what's the call? What's the call? And they're finally like, hey, guys, it's uh, Seven Suns Fest is canceled. Now Hunapu's canceled. You guys go home. Whatever you want to do. So we we're like, this is serious. Let's, let's, let's figure yeah. this out. We kind of had a similar hit here in Georgia. We have a festival. I forget what they were calling this last one, Brian, but it's it's always seemed around like the Day of the Juice, Return of the Juice. And uh, it got canceled last minute, and a lot of the breweries had already sent their beer down here. Same thing. So we actually lucked up from the consumer side because sure. all this beer ended up going to distro. Yeah. They and put it. So we had just amazing beers that were coming down here for a one-time drop for this festival. We can get them off the shelf at our local bottle shops. And so we did. It was nice. Was it Bissell Brothers was the one I was picking up Bissell everywhere. Bissell was coming. Yeah. We got some the 450 of North now. That's yeah. not attached to that, but, you know, we got a lot of good stuff. I think a lot of people were talking about how that did help a lot of these smaller breweries that normally, there's certain breweries here, Mike, and I'm sure this happens anywhere, we get small drops from them kind of when they got some extra. But when, sure. the, when the plague hit, Everybody wants to get their beer out to as many channels as they possibly could. Oh, so, for sure. Yeah. So our retail side here was just loaded up with amazing beer. Yeah, and that'll be kind of interesting to see how things go forward because I know that we've all adapted to be like, hey, we got extra product. Let's move it around to our fun networks and this and that. So once that dies down, our consumers in those networks can be like, hey, we want your beer, amp up production or not. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Right. So I have a question. We're, we're drinking the uh, Smells Like Bean Spirit, the big one with all of super, the... Super duper. Super imperial. Super imperial. And I was I was watching did a video where you were... Okay? What's that? Did the wax come off okay? We yeah, did. It did, yeah. yeah. Yes, we it's, got it. It's a beautiful wax. It's blue yeah, right. with some sparkles yeah. in it. It's very nice. And it looks great on the, the very jet black bottle. Beautiful presentation. My question is, is I saw you in a video talking about adding coffee to this and how you wanted to avoid the green pepper note in the coffee. And I was like, I have tasted that in coffee beers. How, what causes that and how do you avoid it? Yeah, so that was one thing that we learned early on in the process of making that beer. And this is going back five years ago. Was that um, coffee roasted the wrong way and added the wrong way can add green pepper. So we worked closely with Tugboat to say, hey, send us fresh beans so that we can then grind them here on site and then get them into the tank as soon as possible. And what we were we learned is that um, coffee will lose 90% of aromatics within that first five minutes of roasting. Um, so anybody who's making coffee at home, if you're roasting coffee, get it in right away. Don't, and don't sit on open roasted beans. Like they will go bad because the oxygen will change those up. So we would always, we bought into a special roaster here and we buy in the beans, always whole bean, and we'll roast them here and then add them into the tank. So it's really freshness is the way you avoid it. Like a, sitting on the beans for any period of time is what brings on that, that uh, green, green pepper notes. 
I, that, in that, that, and then we introduce it to the beer at a lower temperature, so it's not super hot. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, it's at kind of a mid fifties, and we just do that for a day and a half, and that's it. And just kind of extract that initial roast out of it and pull it in. All right. Well, it works, Mike. It does. It yeah. works really well. Not a we single green it. pepper note that I, I've detected in, yeah. in any of the beers, especially. And that we, one. We, we've checked it now with numerous beers over the years to make sure that over time it doesn't happen, but. Yeah, like it's it's changed a lot because normally we'd get the beans already ground, dump them in, let it go. And that's it. It, it. it that would be the instantaneous. I think oxidation of the pepper or the 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 beans would cause that pepper. Keep room temperature, drink fresh. Exactly. Yeah. Right. That's, yes. That's, yes. Is that not every beer nowadays, right? That's it. Yes. <laughs> All of them. Pretty much. All of them. You know, on the festival note, Mike, are you hearing anything on festivals? Are they are they trying to come back to life anywhere? You know what we we so we paused ours this year because if, if nobody understands that festivals take nine months, twelve months to plan, yeah. like it's a wedding, right? Um, so our fest would normally happens in May is definitely not happening this year. But we finally got some invites, two invites actually, to J Wake Field Fest and to Tripping Animals Fest in Florida in April. So I mean, Florida's in a Florida, right? Florida's going to, they are. They are. Florida yes. man is going to have his beer festival. Yeah, that's right. But if Florida can make it happen and make everybody comfortable and make the, the things right, I hope that that sets a precedent for what we can do other places. But I know they're doing, you know, scale down, um, limited number of people at the fest, obviously mass more and this and that, but um, we'll see how it goes. I mean, we're, we yeah. are, all of us here have been COVID tested and this and that. We will potentially go down there and serve and see how it goes. We do not have any plans to do a fest here in Illinois until we can get our capacity, our tasting room back to normal. If that's not normal, we can't, we can't even think about doing a fest. Like we need to get our place, our staff back in everything back to normal before we get any plans of that. Um, so I would say no fest here until next year. But um, if there's enough festivals out there, that are doing it right out in the U.S. and that we feel comfortable with, we'll give it a shot. We'll, we'll try it out. It'll be nice to get life back to normal. You know, oh, I have seriously. seen I have <laughs> seen the news recently. They said numbers are starting to drop. So hopefully that can continue, you know, get these vaccinations out there and bring these numbers down. Get our, Bring our bring the beer fest back. Send oh, the seriously. kids back to school. Bring yeah. the beer fest back. Yeah, let's prioritize that, right? Get the right. kids back to school. And then beer fest. Beer fest all day. So, Mike, if people want to keep up with what's happening with microphone brewing, what should they do? You know what? Just follow us at microphonebrewing.com, facebook.com slash microphonebrewing, or Instagram, microphonebrewing. We're all, we're all there on the social webs. The social webs. Good stuff, Mike. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode of the Beer Guys Radio Show. Join us next week as we dive into coffee and beer and coffee beers with Apotheos Roastery. We are Beer Guys Radio on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great week, and don't forget to drink local. Cheers. Cheers.